Welcome. All right, I'll go ahead and get started. Hi to you here with us live and hello to you who are joining and watching the recording. Um, thank you so much for taking time for this. Um, I hope that you feel very welcome. Um, I'm excited to be here today with you and do this presentation. I know some of you that are on this webinar from working together and share, and I know some of you from other aspects of life. And um, I just wanna say that it's been really inspiring to work with everyone and everyone who's in this field is here because you truly care about increasing opportunities for refugees and other new Americans. And it feels really wonderful to be a part of that joint mission together. So my name is Holly Marvin. I'm the TESOL specialist at World Learning. Um, this presentation was not only created by me. I had quite a few contributors on my team and people that are helping right now with the webinar that I want to thank Claudia Gates with Share, Eden Hailu, who is the going to be in the back helping with all the logistics of the webinar. And then you can see on the slide here the other members of my team. And I want to give a huge shout out to Gina Asalon, who made the beautiful slides. So if you love them, it's not because of me, it's because of her. So thank you, Gina. I'm a part of the TESOL team here at World Learning, and my job is to design and facilitate teacher training programs. I've been on the team for about two years. And prior to this, I taught English as a second language in the public school system here where I live in Arlington, Virginia for nearly 10 years. And I got to teach all levels of English proficiency, all ages. And before that, I led a training and capacity building team at an international nonprofit called TechnoServe. And I was mostly working in East Africa and Central America. So I just want to tell you a little bit about myself so you know who the heck is talking to you here. Um, I'm very passionate about teaching and learning and especially about getting people engaged. So this is not going to be a typical like spray and pray death by PowerPoint situation webinar here. You're going to have the opportunity to interact and share some ideas with people. And I'm really hoping that either during the webinar or with the resources that we will share with you after that you'll find some stuff that you can use in your classroom. So thank you. I'm gonna pass the slide to Claudia to introduce you to share briefly. Thank you so much, Holly. Thank you for joining this webinar, everyone. Um, Holly, thanks for giving me a minute of air time. Uh, my name is Claudia Gates and I represent SHARE. Uh, supporting higher education and refugee resettlement. We are a three-year project funded by the State Department's Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration. And we are a consortium of four organizations of which World Learning is the lead. Um, the organizations are listed on the left side of the slide. They include President's Alliance on Higher Education and Immigration, Ethiopian Community Development Council, one of the 10 re refugee resettlement agencies in the US, and Welcome US. And we are supporting the World Learning TESOL team in putting on this webinar and sharing information through our network of higher education institutions and resettlement contacts. Uh, we work to increase the U.S. capacity for refugee resettlement by strengthening and building out pathways of engagement for American colleges and universities to engage with refugees. And one of the key engagement pathways that we support and help build resources for is English language learning, specifically tied to career readiness for refugees. This is why we're so thrilled about the work that Holly and the TESOL team are undertaking with the English language certificate specifically tailored to adult refugee students. Um, so if you'd like more information about SHARE, please reach out to us at SHARE at worldlearning.org or visit our website, um, which I'll drop in the chat in a second. Thank you and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Claudia. Hello to all of you who are just coming in. So this is our agenda and what you can expect for the next about 40, 55 minutes here. Um, we're just wrapping up the welcome and introduction part. And then there's going to be a warm up and I, it's going to be a little surprise. So I won't go into details. Then there's going to be the spray and pray part of the webinar where I tell you about the themes and results that came out from the survey, which hopefully will be interesting to everyone since many of you filled the survey out. And I know oftentimes we fill things out and it goes into cyberspace and we never get the information back. Um, and then after we go through 
the survey, I go through the survey, you will have another chance to get into breakout rooms and to connect with others and share your key takeaways, maybe questions, maybe some resources that you're using. And then at the very end, we're going to do the lottery. We will announce the 10 winners who filled out the survey in time to get a space in the pilot program, which we will be doing in the fall of this year. And then we will do a live drawing for one more. And you have to be present to win that. So just a note, because we might, if someone's not actually in the webinar, then we'll give that space to someone who is. Okay, and now, hold on. <laughs> Hi, um, so I'm the English language and I know most of you, oh my God, there's like a lot of you here, but you know, what's kind of embarrassing is um, some of you are teaching others about me and we haven't met. So I thought just in case I would introduce myself and I would do it in a fun way. And I would share with you four meaningful numbers about me and see if you can guess what they are. So here are my four numbers. 26, 1.5, 44, and 6. And in just a minute, we're going to send you into breakout rooms, and you will have a chance to work in small groups. It'll be four to five people, and you guys can guess what my numbers mean and why they're important to me as the English language. Um, and also, please introduce yourselves to each other and share why you came to the webinar and um, anything you're hoping to get out of it today. So what the heck the numbers mean, that's what you're doing, and then who you are, why you came, um, meet each other. We're gonna put you into breakout rooms for seven minutes, so that should give everyone a chance to speak and share. So I know we have a lot of teachers here, so just monitor the airtime and make sure everyone gets a chance to introduce themselves. And when we come back, we'll see how many of you can guess all my four numbers correctly and how well you know me. Yay, okay, welcome back everyone. I forgot to mention, um, I thought <laughs> when I was doing this, obviously I wanted to have a little fun, so I put on the name tag. And then I was like, what kind of hat would English wear? And I picked this cap on purpose thinking that English can be pretty informal as a language. So that was just another fun thing. All right, so I wanna see what you guessed about my numbers and how many people guessed correctly. So the first number was 26, probably one of the easiest. Go ahead in the chat and write in what you think the 26 represents. And bam, many of you are quite correct. I have 26 letters. All right, that was the easy one. It gets harder. Okay, 1.5, what do you think? All right, so 1.5 represents the amount of people who speak English as a second, third, or even fourth language. Okay, 44. Okay, I got some people who are in with the science of reading, structured literacy, and are thinking on the same wavelength, 44 sounds, yes. So the great thing that we all know about English is those 44 sounds can be spelled in many different ways. And that's why you all love me so much. Um, 44 different sounds, 15 of those sounds are vowel sounds and the rest are consonant sounds. And the last number six, this is, a, this is like a really kind of linguistic geeky number. Um, someone else got it though. Six is the number of different types of syllables that there are in English, okay? If any of this is interesting to you and you would like to learn more, I'm not gonna go into anything more about English and the structure of English right now, but I will let you know that in the appendix that I made for the presentation, I put in a bunch of resources on structured literacy. So um, other than the number of people who speak English as a second language, many of these, like the 44 sounds, the syllable types, the letters, those are all related to 
things that you would need to know to teach structured literacy, um, which is going to be a focus of our course. So I wanted to give you just a little preview of a fun activity that I will likely be redoing in the training. Please feel free to copy it. There's um, in the appendix, I also listed out like the learning objective and the steps and the activity. Normally you do this with students and then they come up with their own numbers too. But we're going to move on. So I'm going to tell you about the results that we got from the needs assessment that many of you filled out or many of you sent to others to fill out or you somehow heard about and now you're here. So we sent out a survey in um, early February and we got almost 100. We had 169 responses within not even two weeks, the period that our survey was open, um, which is really exciting. We had two tracks in the survey. We had a track for people who are currently teaching English and then people who are managing programs that teach English. So depending on how you answered that question of what your role is right now, you got different questions. And then we asked, of course, multiple choice questions and open-ended questions. You can see here on the slide, the types of questions we asked, I'm not, going to read all that for you because one, it's boring. And second, I'm going to get into those details. So we coded the open-ended questions into five different, sorry, is it six different buckets? And, and so that we could look at them ourselves and really dig into what are you telling us about the learner profile? What are, what are we learning from the survey about literacy? Because we had this feeling that that was going to be an important focus for our course. What are we learning about teaching online? What are you telling us? The design of the course and how we should design it, the topics we should include, and then andragogy, language acquisition, and teaching practices was one of our buckets. People shared a lot about adult learning and what they think should be included. So as you can see from this slide, we had a wide variety of organizations respond to the survey. Most respondents were resettlement agencies or domestic nonprofits working in the US, but we did have quite a few universities and schools, and we also had some international nonprofits, and I think some of you are joining today from other parts of the world. Welcome. It's really exciting. Um, the next few slides I have are going to list the names of all the organizations who responded to the survey, and you'll notice that some are bold. That just means that more than one person in that organization responded. Um, unfortunately, I didn't tabulate which states in the US people were from that responded, but you can see by reading the names here that there is quite a diversity and people were responding from all over the US and from even all over the world. Okay, so the, those of you that responded to the survey, um, nearly half of you manage or support an English language program for refugees, and a bit more than half are teaching right now, work teaching English to refugees or hope to be teaching in the future. And we asked you about your English classes, what your what levels of proficiency you're able to offer, Many of you, we found out that many of you are able to offer multiple levels of proficiency, and some of you even have a special class for pre-literate students, for students who are also learning literacy. Um, still, almost half of the respondents said you're not able to offer as many English levels as your students need. This slide shows you the data that we collected on English teacher credentials and training. So while a significant amount of the teachers we surveyed, surveyed excuse me, have advanced degrees, you can see that over there, master's, PhD, and TESOL, the highest percentage of teachers who responded to the survey said that they mostly learned everything on the job. And you can also see in this graph in the gray bar from on the most left side that um, some organizations don't have any specific credential requirements for their teachers. And that's a hovering around 35% or so. 
that the ma the mass or the majority do require some sort of training or certification. So we felt like this, oops, sorry, was telling us that there is a need and a market for a certificate program like the one we're creating. Another way we felt like the survey manifested the need for our program was when we asked organizations if they were able to offer training consistently to their teachers, and only a third are able to always offer training. And then the majority of the people we asked, the managers and who managed and support programs said they would be interested in having their teachers participate in a program like this. Um, so we also learned that it is very unlikely that this program would succeed as like a private market certification program where like either teachers themselves are paying or the organizations are paying. Because as you can see here, the manager's response is on the left. Would you be able to pay for some of the costs? Yeah, people were, you know, maybe. What we learned from this is that I am going to have um, some work to do to be seeking grant funding to make sure this program can be sustainable. So we are able to offer a free pilot in the fall, and we're going to be announcing, you know, the 10 of you that qualified later. Um, but after that, we need, I and my team will be searching for ways to make this a sustainable program. Okay, this graph or is showing you the topics that we asked teachers to prioritize in terms of how important these were for them to learn. So as you can see from the red circles, the trauma-informed instruction, English for daily life, teaching listening, strategies that support language acquisition, those came out as the top four. And then what also was great to see is nearly all the topics we included, except for writing, which kind of makes sense because that's probably like, it's important, but it's one of the least important skills when you're first learning English. The topics were ranked as over 80% of people thinking they were either very important or important. And then we dug a little deeper into this data and we categorized it by what we're calling our target audience, um, who were the uncredentialed respondents. So teachers who responded that don't have a master's degree, a certificate in TESOL. And when we dug into that data a bit more, the top themes were actually extremely similar. Four of them are the same. Um, the additional theme that came out was the import importance of teaching literacy, which we had kind of felt like this program would need a literacy focus. So it was very helpful to see that the data confirmed this need. Okay, so as you saw from the previous slides, a lot of the topics were confirmed that we thought were important to include. There were some new additions in that middle column that surfaced in the survey that were great and helpful for us to see, like just making sure there is a focus on cultural competence for the teachers themselves, teaching teachers how to teach students how to learn. Um, for many of the students, this might be their first time in a formal classroom environment. And then digital literacy as a need came out very high. You'll see that again in a few slides later. And so we are going to find ways to incorporate those addition, new additions into the content of the program. Also, we will be having a huge focus on literacy. And so all those sub -talk topics there in the rightmost column of on literacy, we will be including in the program. This slide shows up shows topics that came up that were related to andragogy, adult learning, um, language acquisition, and teaching practice. I'm not going to read through all these, but again, I will be sharing it. And it was very helpful for us to get this level of detail and sub -talk topics so that we could figure out how to include them in the program. Okay, as you can see from this slide, this, this surprised me. I've now presented this data a few times, so it's not as shocking, but 66% of the people who responded are offering online programs or teaching online. 
some, you know, solely online and some doing some kind of a hybrid approach. So there is a lot of instruction that is happening online. And I do think that was helpful for us to support the fact that we are creating an online training program. And hopefully we will be able to enter into that online space and explore some of these challenges you see here and find ways where we can help teachers address them. But as you can see in the successes, people just talked about the increased access with online instruction. And that was huge. I should have made that like doubly bold um, because almost everyone mentioned that as a success, especially like mothers, people who didn't have transportation. Um, and then in the challenges, the low digital literacy was kind of the, the challenge that was highlighted the most frequently. There were some people and I really appreciated their optimism because they decided instead of calling the digital literacy a challenge, they said the success is we have an opportunity to help students develop digital literacy. So that is the way I would like to think about it too. So we asked you guys if you require specific curriculum or specific learning resources and overwhelmingly yes. These were the most popular curriculum and resources that were mentioned in the survey. The most popular was using your own curriculum. And then after that, you can see um, Burlington English Ventures, Eli, you can see lots of stuff on here. And so when we share this out, these will all be hyperlinked for you. And then I also have two slides in the appendix of additional resources that were shared. I think if it were me attending this webinar, this is like the best thing if you're a teacher, especially like you can, there are all these open resource open education resources that you can start using now, like some really awesome readers, some great curriculum that's open source. And I also highlighted the ones that do have an explicit literacy focus um, so that you would see that. Okay, I am now just gonna tell you a little bit about how our course is gonna look and how it was informed by the needs assessment. So again, thank you. So this was the information we con collected on the learner profile from you guys in the survey. And the learner is the center of everything that we do. So this is, this is the profile of the learner that we're developing a course for to teach. And the learner is the, the refugee learning English, not the teacher we're training to teach that. <laughs> Refugees, sorry, that can be a little confusing. Um, so you can see learning literacy and English at the same time low digital literacy skills, inter often interrupted formal schooling, need to find more ways to practice English than just in class. So that these are gonna be things that are all gonna come up and be a part of the training. So to support teachers to teach these learners, we're creating a 10 week program that will Really, the core of it is to enable teachers to be able to plan, teach, and evaluate an English lesson for adult refugee learners. The first part of the course is going to be focused on literacy. So it will be plan, teaching, and evaluating a literacy lesson. Whew, that's a tongue twister. Um, we have 10 modules, 10 weeks, and we've kind of grouped them, as you can see, into themes. And one of the most important things is going to be the teaching practicum where you and a lot of you mentioned this in the survey, like, please include some sort of practice teaching, some sort of real application so that teachers are able to test out what they're learning with learners and then see how it goes. So we will definitely be doing that. Um, like I had mentioned, we're kind of break. We're not kind of we are breaking this into two programs a 60 hour program for teaching English literacy to adult refugees, and then another 60 hours for te teaching English language to literate adult refugees. So in the second course, we'll focus more on like, the traditional four skills, speaking, reading, listening, writing, grammar. And the first course will be very heavy on literacy and specifically teaching aligned to the science of reading and structured literacy. This will give you a sense of what our modules 
um, are going to look like each week. So we're going to have synchronous Zoom sessions, and we really believe in experiential learning here at World Learning, which means that you we create these shared experiences for the participants in the course that will help them to discover the key aspects of what they're learning to be able to do. So for example, we're pretty sure that we're going to use Japanese for some of our foreign language experience sessions because it has a different alphabet and well, it has multiple different alphabets. Um, but we will create lessons where the teachers who are taking the course get to be learners and are in a language where they don't know how to read or write it and get to have that experience. And then we will also be modeling sample lessons in other languages and in English, sample literacy lessons. There'll be individual work and then there will be the real life application in assignments. And then as we move into the course, there'll be the practice teaching. Now it's time for you guys to, I know there's so many of us here that I can't just take like open Q&A. So I thought that it would be nice if we went back into breakout groups and you had some time to talk together and just look, just think about these three questions. What stood out to you in this presentation? What questions do you have? And if you move through those questions and you want to go further, you can share about any resources that you use, like that you really like, um, either free or paid with your learners. All right, Polly, do you want to start answering some questions while we wait for more to roll in? Yes. That Fire away. <laughs> Great. So first we have a clarifying question. Are you developing a teacher training program or a curriculum? A practitioner training program? Yes, we are developing a teacher training program. Yes. Another question we have here from Ophelia is, how do you improve online classes for the literacy learners that cannot attend in-person classes? Ophelia, that's a wonderful question. And um, I, those are the kind of things that we're going to be exploring together in this course, because I know that there are a lot of people who are teaching literacy online, and that's especially challenging. Um, I do not have the answer for you right now, um, but that's the kind of thing that we will be exploring together. And um, if people are teaching refugees that have some level of English competency already, Will uh, those refugees have to go through the competency level of the program? Oh, so that question maybe got a little bit confused with if we're developing um, a, a curriculum or a course for teachers. So it's going to be teacher facing. So as it'll be teacher training. So you as the teacher can decide, like, if you are not working with any literacy level learners, then the first course probably isn't gonna make very much sense for you to take. You can skip to the second one. Um, we did, like I had said, we focused on the literacy level because it seemed like a huge need and that there aren't a lot of resources and training out there. Um, although we did find some fantastic open source resources that we'll be sharing in the presentation. So I don't want you to think there's, there's nothing. There's some really great curriculum people have created. Great. And you touched on the two different courses, again, in your answer there. Um, could yes. you please clarify if the courses are concurrent or consecutive? Um, consecutive. So we're first developing the, the literacy-focused course, and then later, probably in 2005, we will launch the second course. You can do okay. both. All right. So for your... Uh, for these courses, will there be a certificate or teacher training program for the teachers who already have a TESOL certificate, but now want to add some more focus on teaching refugees? Yeah, I mean, I think the first course, if you have, if you have experience teaching and working with refugees, but you have not been working at the literacy level, I think even if you have a certificate, there's still going to be a lot that you can learn in that first course. We're hoping to be, you know, bringing new things. And like I said, our methodology is very much experiential learning. So you'll be learning from each other and from your learners that you're working with on the course, in addition to learning from the 
facilitators and instructors. So we're going to ask a few questions now that are, again, more about the like logistics of the course. There's a question here about the anticipated tuition and um, when courses would be offered in terms of weekends, evenings, uh, what time zones, and how people are selected. So we have a we have funding in the grant that we currently um, that we got to develop this program for a pilot of it. So we will be running a pilot in the fall, probably starting September and November for the literacy level focus class. And then we'll run another pilot of the second course, probably starting around January or February. Um, that is all that we currently have funding for. If you're on this call and you have funding to train your teachers and you want to do this program, we'd love to work with you. Um, what I learned from this survey is like, unfortunately, that is not the case in most situations. So, um, so there is not, there's not a plan beyond the pilot right now. We're going to be seeing who's interested and where we might be able to get funding to continue it. Uh, and for people who want to pursue this teacher training program, are they able to take it online? Yes, this is going to be fully online. We are hoping to arrange the practice teaching, so that will actually be in person. Uh, there's a question here from Maha Abdullah. Are the 60 plus 60 hours for literacy and English also reflected in the actual courses for refugees, meaning not just oh. teacher training? So the, we're not... We're not going to be developing a curriculum that you'll use with your students if you take this course. However, as someone who's taught in the classroom, I know how important it is to have an awesome curriculum and to have access to a lot of resources. So we'll be sharing different ones that we've found and letting you explore and try out different textbooks. Um, but we are not going to be requiring anyone to like, okay, now you go into the classroom and you do these lessons or whatever. We will expose you to various resources that we've found and you will create that in your own space with your organization and with your learners. So we're gonna pivot a little bit, just a couple more minutes, uh, questions from people who are asking, have you ever taught students with learning disabilities and will that be covered in this program at all? Um, how about low literacy people from adults or uh, spe specifically adults with about a basic high school level education? And then once we finish this section, we can move on to okay. the exciting um, part. Yes. I mean, this course is focused on literacy learners. So that second question about who was wondering if, you know, students who are still learning, you'll learn tools to help you teach literacy if you have students who are still developing literacy. In the second course, it'll be more focused on, okay, once students have a basic level of literacy, then, then what? That will be the second course. I see a question about possibly being transferred to a master's or something at SIT. We are looking into that and we're considering getting the course accredited by SIT. And then it could be eventually used as credits towards some higher degree. So that is something we're still exploring. We haven't made a decision about that at this moment. Okay, any additional questions in the chat uh, will be answered in follow-up email. So again, please keep an eye out for that. If your name is here on this slide, congratulations. I know some of you are here in the webinar. That means you won a spot in the pilot program in the fall. And um, if you're someone who does not teach like you manage a program and you want a spot, you can give your spot to a teacher in your program or a friend or anyone. So it's your spot to either use for yourself or to pass along. And we will be in communication with all of you guys here. You can see we have two alternates in case some of the, the 10 that were chosen are not able to participate. And if we have others that aren't able to participate, I'll go back to the wheel and draw more. So again, yay! Thank you. Thank you for your time and energy filling out the survey. And we will be in touch. We are done. I can um, really quickly 
I, if you need to leave, go. I know we've already gone over time. I'll just show you what's in the annex and you will be getting these slides and you can sort through them at your leisure, but quite a few resources for get, learning more about structured literacy, um, some open education resources. This highlighted curriculum here, I think Ginger is even here, is a beautiful open source curriculum for teaching literacy, Adult L Pathway to Literacy. Um, there's some great readers, phonic stories. So these are the things that you will get when we send you the recording and send you the power, the slides. So thank you guys all so much for coming for your time. I hope that you got something out of this.